Hello and welcome to Painters Motivating Painters Reviews. This month we're going to be talking about a bunch of really lovely larger scale models that we had submitted in the monthly event. Uh, if you're not familiar with PMP, we're a Facebook group with a bunch of really great people helping each other out in progressing at the miniature painting hobby. Anyone can join and everyone is uh, very helpful altogether. Uh, and there's a bunch of phenomenal artists on there and we're more than happy to be doing our little bit to contribute towards that. Uh, so starting off, We've got our base pirate girl. Um, I think it's a nice looking piece. Uh, it's very thematic. Uh, you've got good color choices in terms of the palette. Uh, they've got a lot of different kind of colors going on there, um, which I think works for this kind of um, the aesthetic of the model itself. Reminds me of like base Captain Harlock or whatever that show is. Um, but none of it's um, kind of overwhelming. Uh, everything seems to be pretty well distributed uh, and working together pretty w nicely. Like the reds are not too too poppy or fighting on you. Uh, so the amount of colors looks good. Uh, you've also got nice textures uh, uh, throughout the piece, like on the, the knee pads and the kind of camo-y fabric. Uh, and all the materials look quite different to each other, which I think is good. Uh, like we can tell which bits are kind of leather, which bits are kind of painted metal and that. Uh, and there's a nice bit of wear as well, which is good for, again, this kind of piece. It makes it have a kind of like lived in uh, sci-fi aesthetic, which I imagine is what you're going for. Um, I think the biggest gains for this piece will probably be in shading, uh, particularly in the skin and particularly on the face. Uh, you have a very nice skin tone, uh, but it's all quite the same tone throughout the whole uh, face and you can kind of see under the arms the way your light is casting a shadow because it's a larger scale model and um, you'll get a bit of actual shadow going on there and you can see it's transitioning really nicely into a, a dark skin tone but because the head is kind of a ball and it doesn't have quite as deep recesses um, it ends up looking uh, a little bit um, I suppose plasticky so particularly if you look in the inside of the ear it should be a lot more kind of red and you want to simulate the shadows that you get inside of an ear uh, and around the lips like that as well because you usually have quite a dark line in between the lips and um, because in a real person obviously there's a hole in their face uh, and then in around the eyes as well like having a bit of shadow under here to show that there's an eyelid there uh, the, the sculpt probably doesn't have it because it's too um too small in scale so you just need to kind of add one on there in your painting um Doop -doop. So you could try one technique that's very useful for this is like an oil wash because it tends to let you selectively shade all the little recesses and get that what's called an occlusion shadow where you have two two pieces of material in contact with each other and you get a, a dark line in between them. Uh, and that would tidy things up a lot because we can kind of see in a few places on say the gloves there's a bit of the skin tone showing on there and a few other places like on the pouches on her thigh you kind of got the leather tone from that bleeding into the, the dark and um, the black um, that's around it. And that tends to make it a little bit less readable. I think it's fine, especially given the scale of it, but it'll just look a lot tidier with that there. And it would help with the shading as well. Um, and also you might want to darken up the base a little bit. Um, you can kind of see that she's casting quite a big shadow in the middle of it uh, and all the sand. I quite like all the stuff on the base. I think it's kind of interesting and again, quite thematic for a space pirate. And um, but it's again, it's all kind of one color of sand. It's a good sand color, but especially like when you look at her boots, it kind of ends up looking a little bit fake because it's not quite to scale. Sand would have more variety of colors than that in real life. Um, whereas so that makes it look more like it is a, a miniature and kind of breaks that little illusion a little bit. Uh, otherwise, I think we're you saying it was your first piece in this scale. Um, Nope, um, but uh, I think it's definitely a good example of what to do when you're going into uh, 70 larger scale for models. I think I really like it, uh, especially in terms of just the kind of character uh, of the piece and the kind of lived in aesthetic of it. Uh, so thanks a million for submitting uh, and good luck in the future uh, on your painting journey. Um, is it Alex next? Do you have anything you wanted to add there, Alex? To be honest, you've covered pretty much everything very thoroughly there. Um, I think the only thing that I was going to say was thing uh, just on the base of the wet, the way that this sand is dispersed. It's sort of, you've got everywhere except on this sort of, I don't know if it's meant to be like a little rock or a um, thing at the front here. Um, sort of, you've got sand 
all around that and all on top of her boots, but no, none really on there. It feels like you'd probably have some sort of it's windy blowing around on there. Um, but that's the only thing besides what you've mentioned. Um, I think you've covered the bases very thoroughly. Uh, Jim? Um, yeah, agree. I think that the camo effect was uh, really successful and having green hair um, was a nice choice. You've got good travel in the colours on the hair. So um, well done with that. Um, but yeah, just, I think, uh, as Matt said, just to really nail this down, the, the separation of the elements would really, really help this pop. So just to define everything, I think that's the biggest thing that needs to happen. Uh, and then following that would be, uh, going down the shading route. Um, uh, but nice work, Richard. Well done on it being your best and, uh, look forward to seeing some more next time. Um, right. Moving up next to, uh, Paul Rosinski. Uh, so... Uh, he's saying thanks for our work. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Uh, first 75 mil scale model. Um, and this is painted with Vallejo and Chimera. Just want some general feedback. If you see any places for improvement, um, he wants to enter this next year for contrast. Uh, so let's have a look. Um, pretty stunning is the first thing that I need to say. Um, congratulations on a beautiful skin tone. Um, amazing highlights across the whole thing. Definition is crispy and beautiful. Um, the metals are really, really working. Um, it's stunning. The textures in the leather, uh, the highlights in the hair, all these tiny, tiny little details that have been picked out. Um, all really, really wonderful. Uh, so the issue that I had with this really was the lighting. To be honest, um, it's gorgeous from the front. Um, it's very directional and it's definitely selling. Uh, the issue that I've got is with the blue OSL that comes from this kind of like 10 o'clock angle from behind him. Um, so that is, it's giving the kind of impression from this side that he's in a really, really low light. And that's like kind of a moon, you know, because, you know, in his like theme there wouldn't be any bright blue like led lights or you know some fantastical uh plasma weapons or something being discharged near him so the only thing i could think that would really unless it was a magical source i suppose but it just seems like a really really strong uh uh deployment of this osl on him so it looks it looks good on the sword but i think it'd be better on the top because it give kind of that moonlity glow um, the story from where I'm seeing is it's coming up from kind of underneath him, um, hitting the rock, hitting this. It's getting right up under his abs, sort of under here. So it's kind of the lights coming from underneath him. So like the story is a little bit wobbly for me. So the the main issue, I suppose, really is, is this reflection in the red, because these are clearly red armor panels. But, you know, the lighting situation that he's in is so bright that I can't see any reason why anything would cause that much of an effect on him um and i went ahead and i looked up um what fire trucks look like at night because they are very very red <laughs> they are very very shiny and they are surrounded by incredibly powerful blue lights and if you look at this picture here sorry you guys can't see it so take those three things into account it's pitch black that is super high gloss red paint on the truck and these are like suns, these blue LED lights. But look at the tiny amount of blue that's showing up on the red. It is minimal, really, really minimal. So if we compare that to yours, where he's in a very bright atmospheric lighting, uh, this is again shiny metal, but probably not highly lacquered and polished gloss <laughs> of a fire truck. And like I said before, with the story of the blue, it's just a little bit overpowering, I think. It's beautifully done the way you've worked it in and blended it and you've set the shadows and everything's gorgeously done. It's just too powerful, I think, for this. But that's pretty much the only criticism I've got for the whole piece, to be honest, because it's it's absolutely stunning in every other way. Uh, it's just this blue um, interference lighting that you've got going on. I think if you toned that way, way down or lost it, um, it'd be flawless from my opinion. So yeah, it's kind of, strong and harsh feedback because it, it's a stunning piece and if you're talking about competition then that's what you're gonna get <laughs> but um yeah applause all around for me really because it is it is gorgeous um matt i think you're chipping next yeah uh, again it's it's super well rendered in terms of 
uh, the skin and the armor and, and all the little bits. Um, so very minimal kind of pointers. I really love the shield. I think the wood grain on it is like phenomenal in the way you've got the kind of the light plane across it. Uh, I'm not sure that red for the rim of the shield is the best choice compositionally. Um, because the way red is is deployed, as we said, on the model, you kind of have a line where it's starting at his feet, and then it goes up to the brooch in his chest, and then it goes up, points up to his head. But then you have this kind of detour off to the side with the shield, and then that makes a circle, and that kind of traps your eyes, and it fo draws loads of your focus into the shield, which I think at the moment is kind of the focal point for me when I'm looking at it, or maybe the gold on his waist. It'd be nice to have, like if the shield had a steel, like a silver steel rim, uh, it would look just as good as the shield would look just as good as itself. And then the piece I think would look a little bit better overall. And maybe also you could have uh, a slightly higher highlight along the parting of his um, hair. And that would draw a line kind of down again into towards his face. So you kind of would be viewing the model from the bottom up and the top down, but I absolutely love how you've tackled all the different elements of it. Like the way you've got, you can see the kind of the way the muscles underneath the scale male armor, uh, affect, affect the light of it and then the kind of weathering and tattiness of the rags in his arms like it's it's fabulous looking stuff so thanks a million uh alex um yeah so sort of touching on similar things to be honest i think um like the that antique sort of older gold sort of uh, non-metallic is really really nice um i really like the way you've got the color interactions there um i think that's something i sort of pick, picked out on this that um Again, I have similar sort of uh, with sort of the blue light that uh, Jim mentioned. But one thing that I think works really well for that is how on the gold sort of um, bird motif there, the lower one, uh, you've got that little glint of blue where, you know, the metal is reflecting more than, you know, it's flesh around it. So it's got that little extra sort of catch of, of, of light a little bit further, further away than you'd normally expect to maybe see that on a matte object. Um, so I like that it shows that interaction with the materials and the lighting. Um, you know, uh, my, but again, sort of, I have similar um, sort of uh, critique based on what Jim was saying about just the lighting in general. I think that, you know, on the shield, I really like that sort of, you've got that old sort of very atmospheric, very um, uh, sort of blue green sort of shadows coming in. I think it might just be a little bit too harsh there um, in terms of the way you lit it. It's almost as though the light is either you've got a, a very sort of slightly forward light um, sort of light highlighting that sort of upper area between where the bird sort of beaks meet but that and that doesn't match with sort of that slightly more above light that you've got for the rest of the model um, so either it implies that or it implies it's a really really sort of bendy convex shape so I think it's just gone a little bit which from the side view of the model we can see it's not actually it's a relatively flat sort of shield so um, it's, a, it's a really sort of picky thing to say that but it, it's sort of the first thing I notice in terms of critiquing in the way that you know a competition judge might of the lighting sort of scheme doesn't quite match. Um, you know, you've got lots of non-metallic everywhere, which means that it, it's very well done. But um, the way that I would I sort of think of non-metallic models is as soon as you've got some some NMM on there, you need to really dial in crazy tight on the lighting because it makes everything sort of stand out when there's little inconsistencies. A small inconsistency you might get away with on sort of a, a matte surface when you're painting highly reflective surfaces. It, it sticks out like a sore thumb when it's uh, not quite there. Um, but things I really love, I, I really like that wood grain texture you've got painted on there. The texture on this lower sort of uh, cloth um, sort of uh, wrap between his legs. I think it's the the leather as well. Again, sort of picking out for me something that looks maybe more like a, a front on like with this reflection point towards the sort of lower front half of the of the leather, which again doesn't quite match up with the uh, sort of the way the muscles have been lit. But that's you know, it's it, it's being picky. You know, it's it's the texture on there is fantastic. The the tones you've got are working really well. I think you've got a really good sort of atmosphere building. Um, it feels like you know there might just be that slight bit of um, over almost overthinking it because it's a competition piece on your part in terms of oh, it's a competition piece. I want to include a side rim light and finding a way to finagle that in rather than sort of going with what might be a more natural approach of that top down sort of moonlighting and things as that balance between sort of what's artistic and what's realistic and sometimes you can fall too realistic and it doesn't look interesting sometimes you can fall too artistic and it looks a bit sort of mm, to the eye but i think the actual painting is fantastic it's super smooth super well defined 
um, just a few sort of fine tuning on some of those more advanced technique areas. But uh, yeah, no, um, really, really good stuff there. Um, okay, then we will move up to uh, Alexis Bonaire. Uh, first bust, first LMM. Um, nothing sort of specific in terms of uh, looking for, but uh, let's uh, dig in. Um, so, uh, first thing to say, I think you've got this really, really strong sort of directional lighting on the face. Um, I think that works really well. You've got this big sort of uh, intense brightness there. Um, I, I really like that. Um, you know, I, in my own painting, I quite enjoy working with sort of cast shadows and strong sort of dramatic lightings. So it's something that I enjoy in other people's work as well. I think you've got that really, really on point on the face. Um, I think it's a little bit weaker in the rest of the, sort of the musculature. Um, you know, it's not quite uh, some of the light placement in terms of the highlights and the shadows. Um, you know, for example, the chest, I think you've got it maybe a bit too bright in places on that, on sort of the pecs where they could be a little bit duller based on where the sort of the face and that really strong car shadow is saying that the light is coming from. Um, you know, and sort of bring that highlight a little bit lower, but a little bit higher up. So it's more of, um, you know, the, the way you've got the lighting across most of the model, it's saying the light's coming sort of top camera right. Um, the lighting that you've painted it on these pecs is a little bit more sort of forward, middle camera right. Um, so, you know, just fine tuning the exact placement of lights. It's something that shows up a little bit more on busts than smaller models, uh, particularly when you're painting in these dramatic styles. But in general, you've got the volumes picked out well. You've got like um, his sort of area under there, sort of uh, underneath his pecs, so sort of in the shadow that I expect it to be um, and all those sort of things. Um, I'm not 100% sold on the skin tone you've chosen as well, that sort of dramatic yellow. It almost implies to me that, I mean, it's it's a fantasy orc dude, you know. What What is the skin tone of that? But um, sort of how dramatic you've gone with the yellow, um, to me, implies that it's almost like a, like a dawn light, um, so, or a, it's almost like a, a, a slightly yellow-infused um, OSL type uh, effect on there. And I'm not really seeing that across the rest of the model. So it could just be the choice of skin tone is a little bit too saturated in the uh, highlights, but um, you know that that's like I say, who's to say what a what a fancy orc's uh, sort of skin looks like? Um, moving away from the skin, um, I think that uh, you know you've got a lot of really nice sort of well defined elements. Again, sort of that uh, in the bone on his sort of uh, in the horns on the shoulder piece, sort of uh, shoulder guard thing. Again, you're showing that really nice dramatic lighting that works really really well um for that sort of cast shadow that strong sort of heavy contrast um which again feeds into this style of uh, nmm that you've got as well um i think for that it's a little bit too gray um in terms of the recipe um you could mix a few more infusion colors particularly at these large scales you really need those um just a simple white to black transition um or slightly blue white to black transition works on you know 32 mil kind of works at, four, at 54, stops working at about 75 mil scale. So you need that sort of infusion of other colors, either in the form of sort of mixing in whatever you see as the environmental color into your base mix, or sort of going in with sort of fine filters and tints and glazes afterwards to infuse that in. You can sort of work both ways. So start of color from the beginning or start very black and white and then put the color in later, whichever you feel more comfortable working in. It has a slightly different effect on the final result, but uh, that's something that I think is, best left to experimentation on your part. Um, but the actual light placement there, um, sort of, it, it, it's okay. Um, it sells metal. Um, it's just not quite lining up with where I'd expect the major highlights to be based on the rest of your lighting scheme. Um, but overall, I think sort of the occlusions you've got and that sort of those um, cast shadows I really like, the textures on the bone parts look really, really nice as well. Whether that's sort of sculpted texture or painted on, even if it is sculpted, you've picked it out well and sort of balanced that. I like the infusions of colours you've got as well around sort of some of the leather straps and things, giving those more weathered looks and around sort of the his knuckles on his hands, give a really, really nice sort of uh, liveliness to it. So the same sort of colours you've got around the uh, sort of his jowl and things as well. And his little ears, always like a bit of pink in the ears. Um, and uh, sort of the composition, it's a little bit bottom heavy on that sort of heavy saturated orange red at the bottom there. Um, but it's kind of balanced out. I mean, this big sort of really bright sort of red eyes is really, it draws you in really well when you're looking at the, the photo. Um, I, I, my only concern would be because it's such a small point for that spot color is if you're looking at it, you know, across a table perhaps, 
or in a display cabinet across the room, you wouldn't, Yara would be drawn a bit very heavily down towards that sort of midriff area. But, um, you know, that's that's a minor thing, honestly. Like, you, how, of, how often are you looking at a model in detail across a room versus in your hand? You know, that's not really the biggest, the biggest deal in the world. Um, I think it's, you know, for a first time bust, I think it's really, really nice. Um, just sort of snapping in that lighting situation a bit more into perspective and uh, tidying up on some of the muscle definition. And you're, you're spot on there. So, uh, yeah, well done. Um, Jim? Uh, as above, it's a wonderful, wonderful bust. I wish my first bust looked like this. Oh, my God. It's amazing. Um, I can only pick out um, a couple of things, really. Um, the first one's with the smoothness of the blending. I'm not sure if Alex mentioned that. He talks a lot about the metals, but um, just some of these transitions are, are pretty choppy. Um, so a bit of love on those would really help. Um, and then these, um, like light points that you've picked out on the edge of this lower blade, like this cross thing, that's a really cool thing to do, but I wouldn't do it in the shadows necessarily do it on the high bits like this one in the middle. That's cool. Maybe just about get away with this one, but this one that's down here in the shadows isn't really selling, um, because it's not got that broad highlight that's, that's close to it that you can take that white line into, um, Ironically, because that's probably the tidiest one that happened. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that that's about it, man. Uh, it's gorgeous. I love this tone that you got in the bone thing uh, as well, particularly. That's really, really selling as an old, gnarled, weathered bone. So uh, congratulations. Uh, it's stunning. Good job, Alexis. Uh, Matt? Yeah, uh, the skin tone on the orc is like one of the best that I've seen. I love the way you've got, you know, it's got a range of colors at a range of values. Uh, and it's super interesting around the mouth, the way it transitions into more pinks, and then on the side of the head, it goes into darker colors. So it's just everything you really want, especially up around the face. Uh, and cool work with like the drool and everything in there. Like I think the face on its own is like amazing, to be honest with you. So great work, folks, in there. And that's what it should be, really, because the face is the main point on on any bus. Um, a few little places for improvement. I think that the um, his bracer on his left arm um, is not is one of the weaker points of it. It doesn't really match the kind of directional lighting that you have on the rest. It looks like it's been lit from either directly above or the opposite side. And it's got the big rough that isn't casting a shadow on it. Um, so you've kind of got this cylindrical uh, sh pattern on it. But when you get a cylinder and then you rotate it, the, the shape of the and the location of the highlights can kind of change a little bit. Um, it's not as important as the face or anything, but it's just something to work on in the future. Uh, and as Alex said, uh, but I think it's worth saying again, like with the with the non-metallic metal, very good for first try. Um, I'd avoid using uh, black and white similarly, especially like if you look at the black, the darkest point of your metallics, it's far bl darker than anything else on the model. And that's something that they talk about in, a, in visual effects. Um, you have to match the black black point of your scene, so it looks like it's in a different scene because it's got a dark. It's black is darker than the black on anything else. Uh, I tend to, if I'm doing steel, I don't use any black or white. I'll like mix a gray out of like purple and green or something like that, and then add like a light yellow into that, and it just basically gives you that hint of color, and it does the same kind of thing you've got in your skin then where. As the light value changes, your eye picks up different colors in it, um, which tends to look good because it just looks like generic environmental uh, reflections. And you can also, you've done a good bit of adding in um, little extra details on there. You can do stuff like adding in extra chips, like he's got a big chunky chip taken out of his axe. So it makes sense that if you just add in a few smaller ones that you can just draw on a dark line and a light line. And that tends to, again, help having a really smooth gradient um, is the first step in making good looking nmm um it's sometimes actually one of the harder steps um but then to make it look it'll look like um like generic digital kind of uh effect there and then when you add the chips and scratches and things and a bit of color to it that makes it look more like a real life item but for your, for your first bust like this is absolutely amazing you can really see again i think it's it's uh Definitely playing into your general style with the with the from your army stuff with the really bold, interesting skin tones and uh, big burly dudes also. So, fair play, Alexis. Thanks a million for submitting. Uh, we look forward to reviewing 
you in the future shortly. Okay, I'll go up to Bartos, uh, working on this Grigori uh, Ebbing Tide from Big Child Creatives, trying to give it an underwater vibe. Uh, well, I think you succeeded very well in giving it an underwater vibe. Um, the palette is like pretty much perfect for, especially for like a fantasy underwater kind of thing. Um, I think everything about it is very well rendered. It's beautiful to look at. Like I really enjoy it. Um, there's a good ambience. I love the texture that you have on like the leather uh, and the cloth. I love the infusion of red into the skin tones or in the nose and other places. Uh, even though that's actually not realistic for underwater. If you look at underwater photographs, uh, since the red is bounced out by the water, everyone's skin looks quite like yellowy, bluish, greenish. Um, but I think for a fantasy piece, like it looks better, even if it's not realistic, because what's realism worth anyway? Um, I think the biggest challenge in the illusion of having it underwater, like everything, like the fish and the octopus and everything sells to me as being like, yeah, that's underwater, that's underwater, that's underwater. But the actual dwarf himself looks like he's kind of nautical themed, but not actually underwater. But that's to do more with the sculpt, because he doesn't look wet, like if you, his clothes aren't clinging to him. Uh, but he's also, if you were underwater, like there's no way his beard wouldn't be like floating up in front of him and his pants as well, like those big puffy pants and his belt. Everything's hanging very like it's in normal gravity, uh, apart from the little twiddly bits on his mustache. Um, so that's just very hard to sell because like he doesn't even like he's not he's not a figure sculpted if he's swimming. Um, so it, the sculpt is kind of fighting you on that. But I think as a painter, what you put into it. Um, you couldn't have really done any better um, with it. I love everything about the piece, down to the plinth, the fact that it almost looks like layers of sand that are underneath the guy. I don't know if that's intent intentional or not. Uh, but in terms of, like, you set yourself a challenge trying to do an underwater piece, and I think it's a real tour de force in the techniques for doing that, uh, from the build, the way you have the, the fish floating there, uh, the level of detail, the colors, everything about it, I think is, is really good work. So thanks a million uh, for giving us the opportunity to see it. Um, for your own interest, like if you're doing a future piece, you could look into it. They're called uh, caustics, C-A-U-S-T-I-C-S. -S. They're um, the pattern of light as it goes through water. Uh, you get areas that are lighter and darker on the sea floor because of refraction of the waves above it. So that's another way you can kind of sell an underwater feeling. Like on a bust, you could have shadows running across the figure in a pattern. Um, so Marco Frizzoni has a video. Uh, where he uses that, it's called something Extreme Light Sources. So if you Google NJM Extreme Light Sources, um, uh, and it's like just a very rough, like airbrush kind of uh, thing to set it off. Uh, but it's just an alternative way of getting that underwater feeling that you might want to try out in a future piece. But I think, to be honest with you, your one is, is actually better. Um, but having a few of those light sources uh, might be a cool way of doing it in a larger scale, in particular. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I have very little little negative to say about it all, uh, at all. I think it's a great looking a uh, great looking piece uh, from the top down to the bottom. Um, Alex, um, yeah, just uh, gem general sort of uh, similar things to say. Uh, to be honest, I really I really like how everything's got this that blue infusing infusion. It really really works well um, with selling that sort of um, you know, lighting um, sort of well underwater setting i guess you know um it sort of fits into what i would consider sort of the more artistic side of it rather than thinking about the realism but uh it works really well you know that sort of more desaturated shadows and things sort of knocking out a lot of the uh red tones you've still got them there for that visualization of light like uh, matt was saying it works really well with sort of the idea of you know making things look appealing to the eye um you know, it's it, it's it's quite an interesting thing that, you know, Matt touched on it, but, um, you know, underwater blood looks green um, if you go deep enough, um, which obviously making tinting the person with green would make them look really weird. So, you know, sticking with that was is, is the right move. I think it looks really, really interesting, um, really beautiful piece. Um, there's not too much to say. I think I really like sort of the, uh, the cloak on the back as well, where you've got that sort of... Um, you know, it, it sort of sculpts the scales, but with all the little dots of other colors and things, it really helps to sort of uh, give that nice sort of, um, it, it makes me think of the, the kid, there's a kid's book over in the UK. I don't know if it translates to other parts of the world, but 
of like the rainbow fish and i think it just reminds me of that and it just looks really really um really really nice i like i love the color palette that sort of uh you know blues and purples fit into a, a lot of model painters sort of favorite colors but um i think it works really well here the, sort of the blue shadows across everything as well um you know there's not too much to say sort of in terms of of, of critiquing i think you know if there, there's elements of sort of style choice you know i, I personally i'd sort of like to see a little bit more contrast in sort of some elements but um, and a little bit more reflectivity, but how that interacts with being underwater, I genuinely don't know. So, you know, sort of is is there as much contrast deep underwater of someone? Is there as much the reflectivity in 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 the in the hair and sort of of the beard and things? You know, I, I genuinely don't know. So I, I don't I, I, I'm not sure if that's me expecting to see things the way that, you know, I would usually see a model versus what I what I think it should look like on the water um so it's it's that's less of a critique more of a general sort of comment on the on the style of it um I think it's really really cool I really 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 like what you've uh, got going here um and I I don't really know what I don't really think there's too much to critique for it to be honest um yeah no very 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 good um sort of work um yeah just lots of praise <laughs> Jim uh, yeah, lots of praise. Uh, indeed, uh, I think also that you've sold the atmosphere extremely well. I love the muted blue tones to it. Um, amazingly interesting point Alex made. How much does light get refracted, distorted, sort of equalised, if you like, underwater? Because initially I thought that the sword might want some more highlights to it because it's super reflective and at the moment the brightest thing on the piece is the beard, which isn't really a bad shout um, because it's taking the attention nicely up to the face um as are the reds so that's cool i thought maybe you could push some deeper shadows around in the beard just where it's kind of tucking up onto the furls that are above it um but yeah uh oh this orange triangle that you've put here as well with fish starfish and rock thing or coral um amazing choice to um create the uh, contrast with the blues and really frame him really nicely that was you know you had a choice between doing the fish orange and doing the starfish orange you made the right choice with the starfish obviously the starfish probably be orange anyway because they are right <laughs> um but yeah just super choices great idea beautifully executed and this pearlescent shimmering cape thing i've never seen anybody do or try that before but i think you've absolutely nailed that so uh yeah congratulations bartos uh it's it's really really lovely well done um, submit more next time. Bring your friends. We love it. Um, right, next one. Uh, we've got Nick Allen with Rashida. Uh, painted for a competition and it did okay, uh, but you hoped for more. What are the areas of weakness and suggestions or alternative changes? Um, uh, well, well done getting it finished and submitted. That's awesome. Um, the thing that leaps out at me immediately is overspill, which you will get annihilated for in competition. Uh, the stars, the looks like you've like flicked a brush or something, and it's just gone all over the skin. And I think there was a bit on the back as well. Yeah, like a couple of dots on her back. That might have caused, well, probably would have caused some some dinging because it's all over the net. It's everywhere. Um, so um, that probably didn't do you any favors. Um. But I need to say something positive now, immediately, because I love the galaxy effect that you've done. The colours, the shapes of it, the travel um, between the tones uh, is wonderful. This flaming ball thing in her hand, that's really hard to do. I've tried to paint a shape like that and make it look like this um, energetic ball of flame that's purple. Purple flames are really hard to do. I did it on a skull, uh, skull taker. Uh, I think you did uh, a wonderful job on that. Um, so the golds are looking incredible as well. Love the secondary reflections you've got in these um, like concave shapes, um, different types as well. Like you've got these hyper, hyper bright ones. So you've got kind of the more um, muted, kind of older, richer looking golds. Uh, so the variety of golds is really nice. Uh, how you framed her head with this gold um, inlay on this uh, dace thing above her head is, is really beautiful as well. Skin tones are super duper. Uh, I love the travel that you've got in there. You could maybe push some deeper shadow under the arm. Um, there's kind of, you know, you'd expect light to be coming sort of 
this way from kind of two o'clock so you could shade under these arms a little bit more um but in general i think the skin tone is really really nice the highlights are nicely picked out it's smooth you could maybe rosy up the cheeks a little bit more uh there is definitely some there but you could you could maybe push that a little bit further um so then what else did i have da, 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 da. oh yeah the, the actual stars on the galaxy effect um although good i think you may have overcooked it a bit because it's kind of all the same intensity and it's just everywhere so galaxies um I mean, I, let's forget the what the purple because I think the purple you've done exceptionally well with. You could also in these darker places bring in some oranges, bring in some reds, uh, even some greens and blues because Galaxy's got all different colours. So there is an opportunity to to lose some of the purple and bring those other colours in. Probably a bit late for that now, but next time. Um, but the speckling of the stars for me is the, the thing that really leapt out is it just looks completely overcooked. And it just, it's, I hate to say it, I do hate to say it, but I think it's kind of spoiled it because you're not going to fix that now, I don't think. So I just take it as a learning curve that I'm out of 10, you know, you're probably going to score like eight for this. And I think, you know, there's nothing else wrong with any of it apart from just overdoing the speckling of the stars. So keep it a lot more concentrated in some areas you can do this intensity in some like really bright hot spots like where it's really really bright here for example or here that could have a lot of stars but as the tones sort of fade away to black you want less and less of those stars not zero stars but just a lot less than what's here like this uh the the back of this dace on her head thing you know it's just it's just blowing out all of the other work that you did and you're shooting yourself in the foot big time i think um, but I don't want to leave it on a negative. Um, let's talk about the golds on the back again, because look at these rippling changes, the contrast, the reflection, secondary reflections in these little medallion hoopy things are all gorgeous. So you've done an awful lot right with this, Nick. I think, unfortunately, just just dial it back next time. Mask it off with blue tack. Best thing for masking off miniatures, if you ask me, because it's invincible <laughs> and it's so malleable. Um instant masking instant removal no damage it's it's beautiful so um yeah i think i think that's all from me uh but well done man it it's there is a lot right with it like i say um i hate to be so negative in saying it's wrecked by the stars but um have another go at this man cuz i think you could make something really special with this um thank you for submitting um matt yeah, I'd have to agree with Jim on a lot of points. I think it's extremely well painted in various elements, like the gold, the dress, the skin, all super good. And then there's just a few things that make it look like it's not finished, to be honest with you. Um, so, like, I would have definitely restricted the dress, the the star effect to just the dress, because, uh, like, I think in a few places it really gets that idea of, oh, it's a dress of infinity. You're looking through her at stars behind, but then there's too much of it uh, as jim said like i wouldn't have done the headdress thing all in that because it just looks like flat one color it looks like like this isn't that hard an effect to do with an airbrush um and anyone could do it really on a flat surface it, the trickier bit is doing it on the, the curved surfaces so like it doesn't really look like it's super wet like painted on the back because it's something that's relatively straightforward to do. If you had like the ring around that being your non-metallic gold, that'd look much better and it'd break up the whole area. I'd probably do the actual disc bit in the middle of it as some other material and definitely the stuff she's standing on. I kind of get that it's meant to be she's in space, but it's weird that she's like made of space and she's in space. Like if you look at, um, I'd imagine you've played Magic the Gathering and seen Theros, which is all of this theme. It happens all the gods have these space shaped clothes and stuff on them and they're usually standing in a normal environment so you have the space showing through it makes more sense or makes less sense which is why it's more interesting the discs that she's standing on just look like they're not really painted like they're black and they have some airbrush butter on them again wouldn't take very long similarly anywhere is a bunch of places on the shadow where it's just the looks like it's the of her robes where it's just the the base color and that looks again immediately fake uh, once you have the white stars flacking onto it, because there just isn't enough visual noise or anything going on there. People look at it and go, get a toothbrush and you spatter that paint on it. And it's, yeah, it is a big shame because, 
you know you can look at like it works super well in all these areas and then you look under her left arm and just kind of go oh i think you didn't get around to there um whereas if that was like you know had a tint of the purple or a midnight blue it's kind of funny space actually looks better when it's not black even though it is black if you have a bit of a tint of some color to it always makes it look better um and i'd say that's what you lost pretty much all the points on because everything that everything else like the gold is top notch skin it's not an easy thing to get dark skin tone with this amount of reflectivity having this flaming ball everything about that super impressive super well done and then there's just a few areas where it looks like you did your base coats and you did your your airburst spatter and then stopped and like, like jim said like that's immediately just capping how well you're going to do it doesn't matter how gorgeously you've rendered everything else i don't know people are going to look at it and be like why is the base just like look like something that might have even happened by accident um so yeah a real shame but i think it's still a, a good looking piece uh i don't think it's like if you wanted to salvage it i think you could um but i don't think you need to i think uh if we just look at the gold and we look at the dress and we look at the skin we're like that is a fantastic uh piece of artwork there and then in the future you're just like cool uh apply those techniques um more thoughtfully or just yeah uh, to the piece overall um because it is it is super well done in 90% of the volume of the model. Alex? Um, yeah, as I say, I, I don't want to hark on the same point sort of too much, but I think it probably is what, what let you down in the competition is that cloak in terms of, or dress rather, um, in terms of it is really well done. I think the concept is really, really high. I, I really like it in terms of the concept. Um, you know, for what I'm getting from this is some sort of, yeah, sort of goddess-like, sort of celestial being, sort of type creature or be, uh, or being, um, person, whatever, um, that is sort of imbued with that sort of space aspect, so to speak, that sort of celestial aspect. So I, I, I can read the concept really well, and I think it, it, it's, it's sort of well thought out. Um, I think the execution is where it sort of lets itself down, you know, e either in because that sort of galaxy uh, sort of effect, it's it's a similar concept to painting camo, you know, and sort of or the opposite rather of painting camo because camo is meant to blend in. So how can you give contrast and sort of definition with camo? Well, here you're creating your painting design com that's making it look really complex shapes and really sort of um, how you then create the contrast on that and have it look like it's a fabric you know it, it's something that it, it's it's almost I, i'm sure it can be done i wouldn't want to attempt it i think there's a lot of very very high level painters who wouldn't want to attempt that you know and and make it look you know proper um fabric whilst also looking like space um you know the amount of visual confusion that's going on with all the speckles of the, of the stars and all that sort of smoky sort of galaxy sort of space dust type um purple shape Creating that and also creating volume and and sort of uh, contrast is such a difficult thing to do. I think that's you've set yourself a challenge that was unsurmountable um, in sort of what you were trying to achieve there. Um, you know, I, we can see that you can paint well. It's not that you're a, a, a bad painter for not achieving that. It's that the, the, the thing you're trying to achieve is so difficult to get right. Um, you know, um, I, I think that is probably what has let things down here is it doesn't read like volumes um you know the skin tone i really like you know could there be a bit more liveliness in there yes but with the concept does it need that no i think it sells well based on the concept you're trying to sell you know i think the golds are really really strong i think that um you know there's a few places where I, where maybe i think your your black point there has gone a bit too dark but they're so rich they're so sort of reflective i think it, it works really really well you know um could there be more environmental light uh, sort of a reflectivity there again yes but you're sort of selling this idea of a figure in space where's that environmental light coming from in the vacuum of space so does it need it no it sell conceptually it it sells you know um you know i think you could could you have had more the one thing that i think is definitely probably missed opportunity is in that sort of glowing purple sphere of of flamey magic you know, again, you see something like that, we tend to, particularly at competition, we tend to expect there to be an OSL effect around there. You've got a little bit, sort of, it looks like on the fingers, but it almost, I almost can't tell if that's overspill on the painting or if it's intentional OSL. Um, so I think just a bit more intentionality, sort of making it a bit more obvious, making it a bit 
bigger and having a bit more sort of, you know, the, the golds are out on her bracelets there would be where even in the vacuum, vacuous sort of space, I'd expect a little bit of reflection of that color there because there's clearly something there to give some environmental reflection. Um, but, you know, I think the, the rendering of the skin tone volumes is, is fine. The rendering of, you know, the metallic volumes is fine. It's just that you don't you don't get a sense of volume and a sense of shape in the uh, in the dress. But, you know, the actual painting, the effect, the galaxy effect sells really well. The gold is really, really strong, really, really well done. And, you know, it, I, I think for competition being that nitpickiness, you know, I think it is you've set yourself a, a, a goal that's maybe a little bit a little bit too difficult to achieve there. Um, ambition in competition is great. Ambition to the point that you kind of it, it's never going to quite look as good as want it to because of the nature of what you're trying to do is maybe where the ambition should maybe maybe sort of pull back a little bit but um i think it's a, a really really nice piece um nothing to do with your painting at all why i think it it didn't do it didn't do as well as you're hoping for um yeah um you should be very very happy with it and uh yeah on to, on to more models um well done um yeah so now we move up to um bilkins uh, again, another first time bust. Um, scale's about thirty eight millimeters, so I, I assume that means it's it's a little. Is this meaning? Do we think this is like a, a little bust, or like that's full height of the model, or like just the bust of a of a small figure? Because um, I'm I'm not entirely sure what that means there. I think it'll be a thirty eight mil tall bust. Yeah, yeah. So actual thirty eight mil tall. Yeah, mm. cool. Which isn't isn't very big now, in fairness, but yeah, yeah for a bust. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it fits into that sort of that mini bus, sort of more one twelve, one fifteenth scale, rather than that sort of one ten we tend to expect. But yeah, um, sort of uh, Beckman, Stranger Things, dramatic atmosphere, and uh, sort of playing with OSL. Um, yeah. So um, looking at this, I think for a first time bust, um, it's a really really nice attempt there. I think you've got the sort of the general idea of where to put the lights and shadows right, which can be a little bit tricky for some people with uh, busts in terms of there's so much more volume. Um, you know, I think that the way you've sold uh, sort of the, the, you know, it's a very limited color palette and you, you've sold that quite well without it becoming sort of boring. You've got a little bit of variation. I think there could probably be more color variation in there. Um, you know, some areas, uh, particularly this lower chest area that seems to be more of a shadow, is quite sort of one and done in terms of the painting. There's not too much going on there in terms of volume, in terms of contrast, in terms of sort of visual interest. Um, but with with a very limited sort of uh, subject, that's you know hard to work with. You know, um, it's even in the reference image you've given, there's not much going on. So trying to paint it to look exactly like that, I think this is a, another place where you know think pulling pulling back from matching the reference image exactly and sort of putting a bit more of artistic and creative uh sort of that side into it and you know that balance between realism and artism sort of putting it a bit more towards the artistic side just for the for the sake of it being a standalone piece um i think the osl you've got coming from the back that sort of uh, dramatic uh, lighting from this side uh this blue light is really really well done i think it's it sells really well as a, as a strong blue dramatic glow i think you've got the way you've got the sort of placement there um works well um, I think that, you know, it gives a nice sort of rim light from the front as well. I think maybe you've got it coming just a little bit too far across the chest. This particular this sort of blue part on this sort of uh, upper peck here feels a little bit um, not quite in with the light direction of the rest of it, which, you know, from the back, it seems to be a much uh, sort of more diffused lower light than it is a sort of strong top down light that would give more of a uh, sort of front view. It seems to be very much coming from the back. So getting that light there would imply sort of light more here or even towards the front. Um, but, you know, playing with OSL, I think uh, if you're on bus, it can be a little bit uh, tricky to work with and figuring out the volumes there. Because um, what we might take as being just a little bit of artistic liberalism um, on smaller models can't really fly on, on larger scales. But, um, you know, I think the way that you've got that light and shadow interacting, that sort of... Um, a nice dark sort of shadow uh, line between the two different light sources. Um, you know, that helps define things there really well. Um, I'd just like to see, as I say, a little bit more sort of attention to some of the volumes, a bit more sort of giving a little bit more love to uh, 
the smaller details and uh, just putting out a little bit more color variation in there, um, even if it's not exactly sort of that plain, simple color that you get from the uh, the character himself. Um, you know, they've got a full man under on the prosthesis. We've got a little tiny, little tiny dude, so uh, we we can fit in a little bit more uh, sort of color interaction there. Um, but uh, yeah, um, a really nice attempt for a first time bust. Um, definitely a lot to uh, sort of build upon, uh, Jim. Yeah, it's a it's a great attempt, uh, not only at, at uh, first bust, but also this kind of dual lighting scenario. Um, and I think you've done a really great job on it. I think. Um, Alex touched on it before, but I, I just wanted to mention that for me, that blue peck is drawing tension because it's just as bright as that. If that was much more muted or a lawful lot smaller and just a tiny speck that goes up as high as that, then that would really, really help, I think. Um, and then aside from what Alex has already said, which I will agree with, I just think if we nip back to the reference picture, it just looks like slightly more intense red. I don't watch Stranger Things, so I don't know how accurate this picture is. Uh, so I can't really comment. But it looks like if you were trying to match that photo, I'd intensify these reds that are in here a little bit. They look kind of ruddy. Whereas opposed to in the reference picture, it's quite vibrant in some places. Even the forehead has kind of gone back into like a membrane, like skin flesh typey tone, um, which is obviously not the case on yours. So as Alex said, that's just a, an opportunity to bring some different tone in for variety. Um, but on the whole, I think you've um, you've lit it nicely. Um, there's some good deep shadows. Uh, the directionality of the light is really, really good. This is so hard to do. Um, and even keeping some of the tones in around the top of his head that's still lit, but they're red. So, you know, it's 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 really nice. So, um, yeah, great. I think maybe you could do some more. I don't know if the plinth thing is finished, but it looks a bit not. So um, if there's still some work to go on there, then excuse me, pardon. But, um, yeah, I if, whether you could make paint that to look like stone column or something like that would be quite cool. Maybe I'm guessing he comes from a kind of stony environment in some cases. I don't know. I don't. I don't watch it, but it looks like it would be fitting. Um, so yeah. Aside from that, yeah, great job. Um, lovely work with the eyes as well. I didn't uh, zoom in and show that off, but um, they look very, very lively. Those eyes, like this kind of, they look like wet and alive. So uh, yeah, super work with the eyes. Well done. Um, thank you for submitting, uh, Matt. Yeah, not much really more uh, that I have to add. I think this is a really cool idea to do with your bust, to have uh, an interesting lighting situation on it. I think uh, Jim kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, if we look really closely at your reference, it's cool to actually have a reference and like refer to it. Like That's a really good step to, to be taking uh, when you're painting. Um, but I think you've interpreted Vecna as being red and like lit with a blue light, whereas if you look in the photo, he's much more... Um, like He is red, but it's a much paler skin color -y in places and then he has a red light pointed on him from the other side uh so that's just you know kind of for your own uh for your own interest and as well it'd be cool to have a bit more you can see uh specular highlights all over him which are again when something's wet it gets these little tiny reflections in the divots of uh of the light source uh so just by using stippling to do your highlights that can that can really help with that kind of gross wet effect and just make things look a little bit um more interesting but uh could work like especially for your first boss and especially for trying to do something like these opposing opposite lights on, a, on the character and matching it to to a reference image so great work uh, thanks a million we look forward to seeing more from you in the future uh okay moving up patrick callas has this i think he's from labyrinth is he from labyrinth it's it's definitely a puppet i've oh. seen in an 80s oh. ch kids yeah. film some sort of like got like noggly guy i don't know um, and I remember him like, like shoot, it might be from the never ending story. I don't know, but him spraying someone with that thing and trying to push him back uh, with it. But uh, anyway, um, so where to begin? Uh, so yeah, I think you got really nice craggy skin tone. I think the palette matches the skin, the film uh, like exactly to my recollection. I immediately knew what this was, even if I can't remember what film it was from. Um, couple of areas you could improve on uh, you could have a bit more wear and tear on the the cap it's very like one tone so it's going to be old and weathered and stuff um so scratch that up his his ear looks very 
flat, like it should be way redder and have way more color to it. Um, and it, as with the fingernails as well, they're kind of they look more like they're the base skin tone. Um, metal spray thing. I don't know if you're gonna go for like full like look look. You're going into NMM, so like look up some references of cylinders, and because it's perfectly it's made of cylinders, so it's a great object to be kind of working on. It looks like you're going that way, but you can pump everything up a little bit more. Um, to give it that NMM look, I'd say it's not. You probably don't have to go that high up. I'd say it's like a kind of an aluminium looking finish to it is what you're going for rather than chrome. Um, you obviously paid most attention to the face, which is the correct thing to do. So fair play. Um, I think you can push a little bit further uh, with the details in the face, especially like adding more redness to the nose and under the cheeks and stuff. You have it. Like, I like how you've mixed the red into the skin tone a lot to kind of desaturate it down and make it not look too red. But, like, this is a... He's a puppet, like, so you can definitely give him a bit of... And he's got this big red nose. Like, you can really definitely, like, push it a bit further. And on the lips as well, uh, just to exaggerate it. If you look at Bartos's dwarf guy from later on, like, that's kind of the exact kind of thing I'm looking for. You wanted to go into quite a, a pink look around there. Um more so than you would on a real person, I think. Uh, the eyes are done really nicely, uh, but I think the reflective highlight could be a little brighter. It looks like it's the same level of brightness as the white of the eye, but the white of your eye isn't actually that white. Uh, you should be able to see the reflection as being brighter than that because the reflective dot in your eye is a reflection of whatever light source is in the room uh, or the environment you're in, which makes it by automatically the brightest it's like the highest white point you're going to get on there uh, and that makes it look really good when it kind of bleeds across the the colored part the iris into the, the white um that you kind of make out a bit of it and you could even given that it's a bust you could add in additional reflections like there's one inside the pupil sometimes with the way he's looking over here you can get a, a reflection there you can get a water line under the eye um just because when you're working in this scale we kind of expect to see everything we could see in real life, or in a puppet, that's the case. Or he's not a puppet. He's like he's a guy in prosthetics again in the film, I think. But very kind of like Muppet-like. Um, yeah, definitely keep the focus up around the face, using the brightness and the level of detail and the color. Um, you can kind of fade it, like pay a little bit less attention to everything down lower. Um, and that's that's really it. I think it's looking looking really well. I really love how you've done the eyebrows uh, and everything about it. Um, around the face area, you could just push. More or less what you've done so far, just do touch more. That's that's the the majority of it. Uh, is it Alex Neff next? Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's it, it's an interesting one. This one um, for me because Hoggle was a little puppet guy, little uh, little person in in a in a suit with puppeteers controlling all the all the sort of motor motor piece of his face and things. So do do we go for painting it to look like puppet hoggle or do we paint it to look like character hoggle in sort of other media in the way it might have been you know as if it were a real sort of creature which again is kind of kind of the point in in part, part of the point in the film of that that disconnect between sort of the reality and the the puppety dream sort of uh creatures um but um so it, you know if you're going for that looking like a puppet i think you're fine because it's got that it's it's not fully reflective skin and things if you're going for looking like the actual character Hoggle, then, you know, a bit more contrast and things in that sort of slight sort of satininess that you get in skin, that you get in skin and things uh, would be appreciated. I mean, either way, a little bit more contrast wouldn't wouldn't hurt, uh, but it depends on how, how much you want to go with that. Um, again, like Matt was saying, you know, you could have that little bit of sort of redness around the nose and around the cheeks. Um, I, I remember Hoggle having a little bit of sort of a bit more pinkiness than, than this in his nose at the very least. Um, and again, it depends on how far you want to go with that. It, it's quite an interesting one to paint because you've got to decide the balance between... It's not just about the balance between realism and artistic sort of interpretation. It's the balance between realism, the reality of what the thing was in the film, and artistic interpretation. So you, you can strafe that line between whether you want it to look like a puppet or not. Um, I think if you do, then you've done it a really good job. Um, I think in general, uh, you know, I'd like to see a bit more texturing there. If we're not going for realism in 
in like the skin tone and some of the other aspects, you know, like his little weapon here. Um, I don't remember that being actual metal in the film. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I watched Labyrinth. But um, I can't remember if it's actually metal or if it's kind of puppety metal. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure whether you want more reflectivity there or not. Um, you know, because it kind of reads like sort of cartoony metal rather than real metal at the same time. Still a little bit more in some of those glints, but um, either way. Uh, but whether you want to go full on non-metallic sort of style on it. Um, but one thing I definitely still expect to see is a little bit more texturing on, on sort of some of the, the materials. Because even if Hoggle the Puppet is what you're painting rather than Hoggle the character, Hoggle the Puppet was wearing actual clothes. Um, so we'd still, I would still see that, that little bit of texture in the fabric. I mean, it, um, you know, um, in the linen of his shirt, in the sort of a little bit of reflectivity and sort of some, some mottling and cracking on the leather of his little, uh, jacket thing. Um, but overall, I think it, you know, I think the face has got really nice detailing. I think, you know, you've, you've, you've captured Hoggle very well here. You've captured the character very, very well, um, which I think is something that, uh, is not said enough about models when you actually capture exactly, particularly ones that are meant to be characters from things, is you've done a very, very good job of capturing exactly what Hoggle looked like, which is really nice, um, really fun for someone who was a big fan of that film. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, well done. Um, it just, you know, um, in terms of, of um, improvements, it, it really strafes up between whether you want to, what direction you want to take it in, um, but either way, a little bit more texture, maybe a little bit more sort of uh, definition between elements um, in terms of sort of making, uh, you know, some of the colour tones are quite similar in places. You work in a very desaturated palette. So, um, you know, you, you can pull a few more things out, but overall I'm, I'd, I'd be very happy with how this is at the moment. Um, yeah, very, very well done. Um, Jim? Um, yeah, as above, uh, the only thing left for me to say really is just... Um going for a bust make sure um you're picking out the really 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 tiny details on it so you've got some opportunities here I, there's nothing left for me to critique so i'll just say um as it's still a whip you know make sure you um pick out little like crack lines in the lips so it looks like it's textured on there so definitely pick those out um he's got these little wrinkles on his knuckles that have been sculpted in make sure you pick those out um dirt and stuff around the nails it, i think it's there already but you know you can you can exacerbate it you can take it further um and then as as alex said like on the clothes and all of the textures there the leather and the skull cap which i think matt said as well definitely pick them out um and i'm just gonna the last thing i can say is just watch out with the skin tone on his like cheekbones down because it's it's quite close to the leather at the moment so if it stays that way then those two are going to crash um, so just watch out for that. Just just keep mindful of it as you, as you work the leather. You know, bring the tones in, the highlights, the the weathering and stuff. Just watch out that it doesn't crash with that skin tone. Okay, but it's it's a really great start, and um, I think it's going to turn out just lovely, jebly. So uh, well done. Thanks for submitting, and we'll see you next time, Patrick. Uh, last one, isn't it, Jeffrey? Uh, still working on the blue and the lava scheme. Uh, trying to improve basing with some different techniques and some 3D printed stuff. Cool. We love 3D printed stuff. It's awesome. Uh, not happy with the sword. Uh, let's have a look then, shall we? Um, so, cool choice colors. Very, very cool. Blue, orange, wham, bam. Looks awesome. I like that. Lava, though? No. Not selling as lava for me, sir. And I think the only reason that is, is because it's quite clearly sculpted guts that we're looking at. And everyone's familiar with the model and we know that it's guts. So I don't think you're ever going to get that to sell as lava just because of the shape of it. There's the, the stuff that's on the base, yes, absolutely. But the postules and the, you know, the wounds and the intestines and that, I don't think you're ever going to sell that as lava. It's... No problem that it's orange and it's the same colour as lava. I think it looks quite cool. Why the hell not? I mean, it's completely fantasy. It's your unclean one. Why the hell not? Great choice of colours. Balanced nicely. Heh. Sweet. But I wouldn't try and sell it as lava. Um, that being said, the uh, sword you said you weren't happy with. So, I mean, it's not 
the greatest photo angles in any case. This one, uh, this one a little bit. So it doesn't look like there's a lot of like uh, pitting and weathering on it. Um, you could push some more shadows into this bottom edge that's across here. Uh, and then you could do like transitions here uh, on the point and kind of pick out the edges a little more. But I think uh, you could maybe even do something interesting with the skulls that are inside that inlay uh, rather than just having them all that brushed uh, kind of metal colour. So you could do something like that. It could be some kind of um, uh, like a power sword or something or it could be like really badly pitted and corroded in there. They could even be real skulls, you know. They could be set into the actual blade itself. Uh, that would be kind of cool because those will be neutral colours then and it won't be stealing attention because if you were to do that like a power sword, for example, like a blue power sword, you're like, well, that's probably a bit too much blue on the model now. Or if it was red, well, you're going to steal attention right away from the face. So you probably want to think of something like more neutral colours uh, to, to do with something uh, just to break up the surface because it is all very samey. I don't think there's anything wrong with what you've done. I just think you could do more to make it more interesting if that makes sense so through weathering and doing something different with those skulls i think is the answer for that um i like the choice of color for the uh cowl thing that's over his head like a desaturated red it's got the attention back to the face you've got some nice texturing in it and i think that's cool um but i think it needs to be a bit more saturated because the blue is very saturated. The orange is very saturated. Um, so you've got a couple of choices here. You either bring that up a bit, not to like, you know, fire truck red, but just a little bit. Um, or you've got to tone something else down. And I know which one I'd rather do, <laughs> to be honest, because it's a lot less work. Um, uh, the, the skulls that are hanging off these chains, um, I think they could do with a little bit more. They're just kind of base shade at the minute. So. Um, just paying a little bit more attention to the volumes on those. Um, so brighter highlights at the top and deeper shadows towards the bottom and in the crevices. Um, weathering on the chains, I think, would be a good shout as well. Uh, they don't appear to have been weathered yet. So uh, just chuck some shades around in there would be really cool. Um, then there was something I was going to say. What was it? Oh, yeah, the, the back side of the model. Um, doesn't appear to be in the same light setting as the front of the model. So either he's got a big old searchlight shining down on his front and his whole back is in shadow, uh, I'm not sure. But the way that the fabric has been highlighted on the back leads me to believe that's not the case. This is highlighted the same-ish as this red on the front. You see what I mean? So the lighting situation isn't really tying together very well between the front and the back of the unclean one himself. So this beautiful work that you did on the front, I'm sorry to say, you've got to do it on the back. People do look at the back as well. Um, so I think that would really, really help um, bring those tones up. Uh, leave the deeply shadowed bits as dark as they are, absolutely. But uh, the upward facing sections, like across the broad of the back, these big flabs across this thigh, uh, top of this arm, knuckles, that would it's all exposed to the light. It's very strong light, uh, so you've told us. So, yes, those have got to be highlighted. Uh, opportunity for corrosion in the chain mail thing that's hanging from beneath his big stinky bum uh, would be a great shout. And then for the basing, um, I like what you've done, the texturing and the, the shaping of things. And like the little extra arrow heads that are sticking out, those are super cool. And like the axe, which is there, and there's a skull back here. That's all looking cool. Um, and like the lava spouting out, that's a really cool effect that you've got going on there. That's cool. Um, it's just the greyness of it is quite boring, I'm sorry to say. The colour is letting it down massively. So um, get some ruddy, ruddy tones in there. You know, your browns, your greens, your reds. Um, get some shades in there as well of different colours. Um, just to give it some more interest, there's so much going on with him and standing in this grayscale world. Do you know what I mean? So I just think that's letting it down a little bit. But I, lo I like the effect of the lava that you've done. I think you've, you've solved that quite well. You could maybe bring the glow effect slightly further out and just um, reduce the tone of it. So going more towards like your corn red or whatever um, would be nice. 
uh, like around this one particularly, there's like this very desaturated orange ring around it. So if you were to widen that out and bring some more red as as it gets further away from the heat source, that would be really, really cool as well. Um, I think that's about it for me. Um, so yeah, props, man. I love the scheme, what you've done with it. Uh, looks looks really, really good. Just just keep pushing it, especially on that backside. And uh, yeah, have a play with stuff, uh, inlays, whatever for the sword. Um, but nice one, Jeffrey. Thank you very much for submitting. Uh, Matt? Uh, yeah, so I think Jim said pretty much like 90% of what I was going to say, but um, definitely on the lava, like if you want it to look like lava and you can't have it look like lava and look like guts. So if you want it to look like he's full of lava, like you'd have to sculpt over the guts and have it running out and then probably paint stuff running out of all of his pustules and stuff. Uh, and then the lava, if it's, you know, it has all these snaky bits coming out that look like guts or whatever, which is kind of, it's very confusing. Um, so if it's meant to be guts, then it could probably have a bit more, like, it could, basically, you don't want to be trying to tell two stories um, at the same time, because that's that's the easiest way to, to get caught out in your painting. I think it's a really cool scheme. I really like the idea of that blue lava that you get in whenever there's whatever minerals in there. Um but I'm not sure, again, whether he's full of lava that looks like guts or he's surrounded by lava that looks like guts or, you know, which whichever what it is. Um, I think the sword is okay. It could have more detail. A lot of weathering, verdigree, that kind of thing would look good. Uh, and then uh, picking out highlights on it. I'd, if you if there's any way you can do it, I know that you probably want him with the plague fa flail for gaming purposes, uh, but I think it looks just terrible um this is one of those models like a lot of games workshop models where it was obviously sculpted with a certain loadout in mind and then they went oh we've got to add this or we've got to add that and then you just go okay he's got three chains with three skulls and each of the skulls has three holes in it and it's just like creating all of this visual noise over to the side that isn't doing anything for the model and just makes it look worse um you could do a lot in the painting to kind of take away from that but ultimately the model looks better when he doesn't have that like when he has this little magic wand or his bell or whatever, or just an empty hand, he'd look better. Um, and then the last thing is on the basing. It's cool. Everything you've done. I love the arrow sticking out. It looks like this like wacky battlefield thing. Uh, obvious cork is obvious. Um, I've just gone away from using cork altogether because you spend so much time hiding it. Once you get two stacked on top of each other, you're like, there's no patch of ground in the world that has like two tiers to it. It's not like the world's not made of wedding cakes. Uh, so you need to break it up so much. Uh, you'd almost be better off like just completely cover it with some kind of paste or putty um, or spend ages chopping it to bits. Traverian has a video where he um, he does like the Ogroid Myrmidon and he ch says chunks like 280 times because he's just constantly breaking the cork until there is no flat edges of it and then it's just more hassle than not using cork in the first place. So either cover it up, I'd say yeah, if you're going to use it for, for volume and height just completely cover it up and make sure there's lots of random variation at the top. Like the only thing it really works for is tarmac roads or um, asphalt or whatever Americans call it. Um, because we expect that to be uniform in height. Whereas any kind of natural landscape isn't really going to have that. Um, even like pillar lava, lava, it's got all these different tiers to it, but they're not regular across from one side to the other. Um, and as well, if it is basalt, basalt, if you look at reference pictures, it's actually fairly brown. Like we think of it as even black and gray, but it's actually, you know, it's got iron, it's got other minerals in there. I don't know what the thing that makes the lava blue, but it'll definitely have some kind of color to it. Because uh, like, basically there's nothing in reality that is just black and white. Um, black and white look could be good. I don't think it's it's going to work having your your guys in a black and white world with glowing lava, if that's what you're going for just having a very slight tint of your orange or your blue or your brown or just anything in there just to make it not look gray because uh again it just looks like it is monochrome and it kind of uh it just stands out in a way that you don't want i think he's yeah like i think he's really cool looking to be honest with you and i'm not super worried about the sword either um the main focus in this model is the dude's mouth and like you've got the the bugs spilling out of it picked out super well and the you know, you got a bit more focus up on it, so I think it's it's quite successful as it is. So I'd be very happy with it uh, if I were you. Uh, Alex, do you want to add anything to finish this up? Mm, yeah, I mean, for for, for me, uh, making it look like lava internally. It's, to be honest, that's that's not the biggest issue to me. I think the only like the boils being sort of 
flamey and looking kind of like bubbling lava that's fine lava bubbles we we all sort of recognize that where you've got patches where you know the model is sculpted to look like the skin is rotting away and you've got this sort of boily sort of pitted skin underneath like on his the back of his arm and that can look like lava just just fine to me um the only part that really really doesn't work for, for, for me at the very least is that that gutty bit in the middle I think I think it it sells elsewhere. If you didn't have if you didn't have that bit of guts in the middle, the rest of it selling is kind of like lathery. It less like being made of lava, more like being sort of an internal heat, sort of uh, that sort of internal flame, uh, sort of effect that works for me. Um, you know, with like Matt was saying, with those guts there, they look like guts. We can't get away from the fact that they look like guts. Like Jim said, everyone recognizes a great old unclean one by this point. It's such an iconic and such an old model at this point we can't not recognize it so um you know th there are two ways around that what matt mentioned about sculpting sort of sculpting something else on sort of re-sculpting it there or you know painting it like if you've ever seen um i think the the main one uh the or the the archetypal example would be in uh, the um volcano in hawaii where you've got that very slow moving lava where it's got that sort of crust of of cool black sort of uh um cooling magma on the top or um so you could make it look like you could paint it to be sort of a slate gray sort of black guts with just like a, a little bit of an internal glow to them rather than all glowing hot and that might work i, I don't know um <laughs> but um you know i think you know what what jim was mentioning as well about at, at the back where you've got this disconnect of the lighting schemes the way i would do that personally is i'd shade down the cloth even more so it is a dramatic lighting scheme and then you can play with OSL from your lava on the back and make those big glows and sort of, you know, you've got these little sort of rim glows of lava. Make those bigger. Make it look like it is shadow and casting light. Super easy fix. It's not even really a fix, so to speak. It's more tweaking what you've already got there. And it'll, it, as, far, as far as I'm concerned, it'll help sell stronger atmosphere because you've got a more directional light there. It'll show off some more technique. And it'll look quite cool as well, which is always a bonus. Um... You no, know, and I think I think the blue and lava works well. You know, it is it is kind of a thing in nature. I think um, Matt was sort of touching on it. What when we have blue blue lava, it's not really a thing. Um, it you can have blue flames over lava where it's the sulfur gas burning off uh, with an electric blue flame because sulfur ions burn blue. Um, and I think that works quite well with the concept of you know an internal flame with this blue on the outside. I think that that fits together as a concept. Um, I think if you were doing that, though, you'd have to have some glow in the eyes, some some sort of heat there. Also, make that be your spot of highest heat in a really big flame, possibly even some flame, not necessarily on the mouth, because you've got all these maggoty things spewing out of it. But, you know, just as uvular, uvular at the back, at the, the sort of the top of his throat, you could have some glow there. So it looks like there is that, that heat coming from, like, deep within him. That would look really, really cool. Um, and would sort of tie this scheme together. Just a few little tweaks there that where nothing here is outrageously wrong. I don't think so at all. I think you've got a really, a really interesting scheme and some really nicely painted pieces, all very, very clean. Um, you know, I think that that's a really, really good, strong start to a concept that just needs a little bit more realization, um, but very, very cool. Um, the only thing that I would say is a negative to me in terms of the painting is you've got this beautifully layered and beautifully volumetrically highlighted flesh, um, sort of layering and glazing there to draw things together. And then the skulls on his flail, that's a base coat and a wash. And you can tell that it's a base coat and a wash for looking at it. Um, so to me, it feels like there's been a little bit less effort there, um, a little bit less sort of interest, which is fair enough. It's okay to sort of pull your punches when you've painted a lot going on. And I think you said you're still working on it. It's still a whip, so you've still got time to fiddle with things. Um, but uh, that just stood out to me as not as much not as much time spent on those, um, which you know it, it sort of stands out a bit next to these beautifully sort of rendered sort of uh, flesh uh, sort of tones around that. But overall, I think it's really really cool, and I think it's you know it's got a, a really strong starting point just to do those a few little sort of uh, tweaks to. Um, as I say, you say you're still working on it, so you've got the opportunity to do that and just really tie everything together into that sort of concept um, really, really strongly. But uh, yeah, well done. Cool. So that takes us to the end of the month. Uh, thanks very much for watching the video. Uh, thanks very much as well for everyone who submitted their models. Keep up the great work.
Uh, the event is open for this month already, so if you want to be part of the next review, head on over to Painters Motivating Painters on Facebook and submit one of your finished units into this month's event. Uh, and Merry Christmas! 